I've seen the face of hell, and I'm not sure I'm ever gonna recover. <laughs> It's the entire point of this show. They've destroyed their own lives and they bang everything in sight. Baby, I can drink some my sleep. You're a polar bear. I'm a what? I'm not sure if those two things are related. My number one rule, don't f the flag. I'm going to remain detached, objective, and mostly sober. And despite the fact that they can't even keep their lives together while they're doing their jobs by remaining professional, they're also obsessed with one thing. These schmucks are dangerous. Our democracy is dead! Yes, for some reason, they think that they are the ones who should in fact protect. Wake up! It's only our democracy at stake. <laughs> Love, I wouldn't trust you to set the washing machine correctly, let alone protect democracy. Your network is racist and sexist and conservative. When you've admitted that you can't even get your own life in order, worrying about the nation, definitely a step too far for you. I am the eyes and ears of my entire generation. Hi, Thea! How do you sleep at night? You can't even keep your legs together, let alone the country. Wait, what? You have been getting laid this entire time and you're still this tense? But the woman on the bus is looking like the next car crash television. And I'm not just saying that because of the trailer, although it's very obvious in the trailer. Get out of here! This series first began development in August 2019 at Netflix, but by 2021, Netflix had yeeted the series. So then it got picked up by CW, only for CW to drop it, and then it moved over to HBO Max in 2022, which is where they got Melissa Benoist on board. This is a show that already got cancelled by two networks before it was even released. Thank you! I love movies! I love making them! And I and I am a fan of movies! And when your series is so bad that even the CW doesn't want it on their networks, maybe it's a sign to stop. Although, let's face it, with the current year, I think we all know why this series finally got put into production. Your network is racist and sexist and conservative. Definitely hoping to ride a wave of interest, or at least influence one. And the thing is, it's not like this territory isn't ripe for entertainment. There's a few series that I like that have done it before. You had Yes Minister from the 1980s and the thick of it featuring Doctor Who. Simply made a mistake. You yes, got on the record and off the record mixed up. Oh, TR. On the record, baby. No, no, it was off the record. Oh, hey, Yoko Ono and the two remaining Beatles piss off. There were actual comedies that focused on the day-to-day -day running and what happens when things go wrong. But the women on the bus, uh, that seems to have a, a very different focus. I am the eyes and ears of my entire generation. Baby, I can trick some I have a feeling that this is very like Barbie, where it's essentially like, we know you're miserable, but your life isn't your fault. That guy over there is keeping you down. Well, this is aiming to reassure you in a different way. We know you're miserable, but so are these people over here. Getting entirely out of control. Jesus Christ! If misery loves company, then this genre of entertainment definitely seems determined to spread it as far as possible. Coming from the Vampire Diaries boss, featuring Melissa Benoist as Sadie McCarthy, a journalist who romanticizes the original boys on the bus and who scrapped her whole life for her own shot at covering the campaign. If your whole life has led up to this... On the verge of divorce. There is no such thing as work-life balance. We have all been there, trust me. Maybe you want to reconsider your priorities. Get her back here right now, so I can loof her to death. The synopsis adds, despite their differences, these women become a found family with a front row seat to the greatest soap opera in town. The battle for the house that Google's AI couldn't recreate. As well as the Vampire Diaries, Plek created Legacies. If that's not enough of a reason to make you not trust their next series, I don't know what is. And in recent years, co-created the Vampire Academy. I've not even heard of Vampire Academy. Vampire Academy has been cancelled after one season, really filling me with confidence there. But who knows, maybe there's hope. I mean, Melissa Benoist is in it, and you know, there was some interesting moments in Supergirl that she did. <laughs> Yeah, this is the first TV show she's done since Supergirl. Supergirl would be the show where the entire cast was amazed that she was able to wear trousers. Goodness gracious, <laughs> pants. 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 Never trust a group of people who are that excited to get rid of a skirt. Especially as at that point, that was the only thing bringing in the audience. Well, maybe this show has learned something from him. I mean, what's the rest of the cast like? Well, uh, I'm not sure they're best chosen to bring in a, a wide-ranging audience. But if you are the kind of person to get intimidated by somebody who's more attractive than you are, it's probably a good choice. Their story is about to break. 
low viewership records. Benoist plays a journalist who romanticizes what she sees as a bygone era. I'm going to remain detached, objective, and mostly sober. I have a feeling she's not a traditionalist. I don't know quite what gives me that impression. I'm going to remain detached, objective. You have been getting laid this entire time and you're still this tense? One of my favorite things from the articles is how people try and spin this, because they desperately want it to be a success. Given the topic, they really want it to be popular. Although that is quite the leap of faith, even for them. This is why I like what TV Line said. The girls on the bus has taken a rather meandering route to the screen. Which is the politest way you could possibly phrase, it got nuked by two television stations because it was ass. You know, it wasn't nuked by them for being terrible, it was just failed to move forwards with the streamer. And then Max came along and handed it a straight to order series. In fact, it only lasted five months at CW before they were like, we've got to get rid of this. Before finally moving over to Max, where it was handed a straight to order series. Because I'm guessing if they'd seen the pilot, they also wouldn't be able to justify it. Oh, it's about a load of women banging, Ah, oh. It's very stiff and I mean, you can barely bend your legs. Hey, I mean, if that picture doesn't make you want to go and see it, I don't know what does. I mean, even the Mary Sue is on board with this one because it's bringing back political comedy. Permission to speak frankly and off the record, yeah? She's an idiot. I mean, when I say to you the words politics and comedy, if that is not the image that comes into your head, well, I, I don't, I can't help you. I do think I'll find this show funny, but I'm not sure farce is the kind of comedy they were going for. That's like being disabled at a football match. I mean, she's very close to the action, but hardly likely to score a goal. Ever since Veep, we've been waiting for the next great comedy to hit our screens. And judging by the trailer, it seems our prayers have been answered. Yes, that trailer is a laugh an hour. And it's only two minutes long. <laughs> From the executive producers of The Flight Attendant. That's another one I'm gonna need to look up. I met Alex on the plane. Had dinner in Bangkok. We went back to his hotel. So the critics loved it and the audience didn't. How many drinks have you had today? I'm a crazy drunk flight attendant. If I was a betting man, I'd say this series is gonna follow a very similar path. If we look at season two, the audience hated it even more. This series looks like a blast and falls into my favorite genre of Mac show, four ladies doing things. Well, Mary Sue, I'm so glad you have such specific tastes. I don't care what they're doing. I just care that they don't have dangly bits. There's four of them and they do something. What happens if they're just destroying the universe? Look, if there's four of them and they don't have dangly bits, she's happy. I think one of the greatest benefits of life is to be born easily pleased. There's a lot to be said for just having really low standards. It has to make your life a lot easier, doesn't it? That's why I envy the Mary Sue. <laughs> but if you want to know why this show is total hell, well, there is another element to it. It's not just a TV show. It was inspired by real life events. Boy, I wish I was joking. The industry talks a lot about identity, identity, identity. The show is based on a book that was written by one of the journalists in the 2016 campaign. Or as put in the title, her role in the failure and how much she regrets it. Oh, it was just because we didn't get any affection and how I would love to have talked about all our different proposals. And for any of these topics, I would have gladly kicked off any of the other drama around the campaign. Yet, one of her excuses for doing journalism. Yes, it's incredibly biased. It's, I wanted you to win. I just didn't have any other choice. And yet seemingly felt bad about it. Like they'd failed because they wrote true things that happened. Did reporters and voters fixate on the damaging stories because they were misogynist? Or is it because the US is a deeply bigoted country? The book is light on these issues. It's not about them. This concerns the relationship between a candidate and her campaign reporters. And the portrait she paints is a depressing one. And they think it's depressing because occasionally they might do a bit of journalism. They might act like they're not just there to be your hype man. Occasionally, they might see if you're telling the truth or not. You're pure evil. And you're just another man taking credit for a woman's work. And as far as this article seems to be concerned, that's a bad thing. <laughs> now you've got to shut up and praise him, you bigot. But as it turns out, that very book author was brought in for this show. Which makes sense as the book is the basis of it. Amy was not prepared when she got the call from Warner Brothers. She was in full writing mode, aka in pajamas and stinking of cat piss. She was in the middle of writing her book. W what? Warner Brothers contacted her for a show about her book when she was in the middle of writing it. My book was very personal. Is that why you published it and broadcast it to the world? <laughs> Generally, it's best to keep your personal stuff... personal. The clue's in the name, love. But Warner Brothers was hooked. 
Yes, after Netflix and the CW, <laughs> we knew nobody wanted to relive 2016. Greg, being the genius that he is, didn't want to do a show that was just a campaign. We knew nobody wanted to relive 2016. So they thought, how can we hide the message that we really want to get through to people behind something they may actually turn up and watch? Here we are. Vicious competitors getting entirely out of control. This show is like a Trojan horse for the destruction of society. <laughs> Chozix focused on the story of what happens during those unpredictable days. Well, I think we saw what happened for most of it. My number one rule, don't f no wonder you didn't have time for proper journalism, love. Difficult to type when your legs are behind your head. Drawing on Chuzik's own experience of what she saw as more and more women joined what was previously called the boys on the bus. I'm not sure that trailer is the compliment they intended it to be. Women had sort of taken over the boys on the bus and we became a found family. You better not be doing that with your family. You become friends with people you never would normally because you're thrust together. There was definitely a lot of thrusting involved. When Benoist came on board, I didn't know how naturally comedic she is. She's so funny. Now, I don't want to say press X to doubt, but I've also just heard the same thing said about Dakota Johnson in Madam Web. I have always really loved Marvel movies. I mean, what percent of Marvel movies have you seen? Uh, four percent. Four percent. So press X to death. And humor is a big part of the show. You would have thought you could have put that in the trailer. Yes, it's about what's happening this year, but there's also romance, intrigue, and a shirtless Scott Foley. Isn't that just the first one? Things are really dark right now in the world, in media, whether it's layoffs or distrust in the media, and I think our show is the antidote an escape. We're going to allow you to escape it by thrusting you into the middle of it all. Do you remember how bad it was in 2016? Please remember, because we're desperately trying to make you think that it's worse than your life now. Get her back here right now, so I can live her to death. There's a lot of hope and heart in it. There's a lot of stuff being shoved somewhere, I'll give it that. The other thing I'm really proud of is it really celebrates journalism. That's a mistake. Most people have that category of career filed under wouldn't piss on you if you're on fire. It makes the job look cool. Well, I mean, it is a fantasy show, and it shows you how hard it is to devote your life to the road. It's prestigious. To who? I'm trying to work out what I could possibly respect less. I mean, I think even a dung beetle would edge it, but it's not glamorous. Yeah, dung beetle has a more glamorous job as well. At its core, the girls on the bus is the story of four women who discover they have more in common than they would have ever thought before. Yes, they've probably all been banging the same bloke. We really do feel like the heart of the show is the sisterhood. This environment puts them together. You have to make conversation with Fox sitting next to you at every event. I love that that is the example they use for, you should see the hell I go through. My life is so difficult. I have to be in a room that Fox is in. I was in tears, but I kind of managed it a bit. I'm so brave. And look, when they served up promo images, if these photos do not get you straight through the door of this series that has already been cancelled by two networks before it was even released, then I don't know what will. I'll tell you one thing though, this is the kind of show for people who will stick stickers all over their laptop, except for the Apple logo. Wouldn't want to cover up your luxury status symbols, would you? Because in this show, the only thing they don't have is a fulfilling life. <laughs> no, when it comes to the girls on the boss, I'm looking forward to it. Because I expect this show to have all the wisdom of Milf Manor. She's beautiful and thoughtful. Shine wherever you go. I used to stick to your God to yourself. I'm glad you like it. Wise words there, and words I think will be repeated. For some reason, every show like this is just them destroying their own lives, blaming somebody else for it. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.